What's up you friggin' geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to identify terms, constants, coefficients, and like terms. Alright, so let's jump into it. Okay, so a term is simply a number, a variable, variable, or a combination of multiplying these two together. So either multiplying numbers together, multiplying variables together, or multiplying numbers and variables together. Okay, so just a combination of multiplying them. Multiplying. So let me give you some examples of terms. Okay, so like I said, it can be a number. So if you just saw the number three, that would be a term. If you saw the number five, that would be a term, okay? It could be a variable. So if you saw just x by itself, that's a term. If you saw y by itself, that's a term. Or, like I said, it can be a combination of multiplying these in different ways. Just like 5x, because this is the same thing as 5 times x, right? So I'm multiplying them together, so we just have 5x. Or you could have 3y, because this is the same thing as 3 times y. Or we could have something like 5 squared, because this is the same thing as 5 times 5, right? And this is a combination of multiplying two numbers together, right? Two terms together. So we could simply write it as 5 squared. Or I could have x squared, which is the same thing as x times x, which again is a combination of multiplying two variables together. Or I could also combine them. So I could put something like 9x squared. So this is the same thing as 9 times x times x. And then something important to realize is this exponent, this 2, only applies to the x. You don't apply it to the 9. It just depends what this exponent is attached to. So if I had something like 9 squared x, then this exponent is attached to the 9, and I would just apply it to that. So then here I'd have 9 times 9 times x. Okay, so make sure whenever you see an exponent, you're applying it simply to what it's attached to. So here it was attached to the x, and then here it's attached to the 9. And again, both of these would be examples of terms. 9x squared and 9 squared x. So another common example you might see is something like 2xy. So this is the same thing as 2 times x times y. Or you could see something like 5x squared y cubed, which is the same thing as 5 times x times x times y times y times y. So again, this 2 right here is attached to the x. That's why we have two x's. And then this 3 right here is attached to just the y, which is why we have three y's. One, two, three. And then the five out here, that's just by itself. So if I gave you a problem like 2x cubed plus 7y plus 4, and I asked you, how many terms do we have here? Well, we have this one, 2x cubed, that's one term, that whole thing is one term, and then we have 7y, that's also one term, and then we have 4, which is also one term. So we have three total terms here. So 2x cubed, that's a combination of multiplying a number or a constant and a variable. So it's kind of like this example we did right here. 7y, that's a combination of multiplying a number and a variable together, right? So it's kind of like these two up here. Or it could just be a number by itself, just a constant by itself. So it's kind of like these two right here. Okay, so those are terms. Now let's move on to constants. Constants. What are constants? All right, so constants are just numbers that are by themselves. They don't have any variables next to them, okay? They're literally just numbers. So three is a constant. A hundred is a constant. Negative 42 is a constant. Okay, so they're literally just numbers. So if I gave you a problem like 5 minus 19 
plus 4x. And I asked you to identify the constants. What are the constants here? Okay, so is 5 a constant? Yes, because it's just a number that's by itself, right? Is 19 a constant? Yes. Okay, but something important to realize here is that this isn't just 19. This is negative 19. Okay, so we always have to take into account what is the sign that's next to it. Okay, so my constant here would actually be negative 19. Okay, just like this is positive 5, so I keep it as positive 5. This one was minus 19, so I'm going to keep it as minus 19 or negative 19, okay? Now, is 4x a constant? No, because it has a number, but it also has a variable attached to it, right? So this is what's known as a coefficient. So let's get into those next. Okay, so a coefficient. What is a coefficient? So coefficients are those big numbers that you see next to the variables. So it's not the little numbers you see up top next to a variable. Okay, so let me give you some examples. So if we have 3x, 3 would be my coefficient. If I had 5y, 5 would be my coefficient. If I had 10a squared, then 10 would be my coefficient, right? This is the big number next to the variable. Exponents are not considered coefficients. They are exponents. They are completely different, okay? Or what if I just had the letter x? What would my coefficient be? It would actually be 1. There's always a hidden 1 next to any variable that's just by itself. Why? Well, let me show you why. x or 1x, that's the same thing as 1 times x, which is simply equal to x, right? It's like saying 1 times 5 is just 5. 1 times 100 is just 100. So 1 times x is just x. And make sure you understand this is, we don't put a zero here. It is not zero. It is one. Why? Well, okay, let's put a zero here and see what happens. So what if we put zero times x? Well, anything times zero is just zero, right? Which is obviously not x. Okay, so let's do an example. So if I told you, identify the coefficients, and I gave you this problem right here. 7 plus 9a plus y plus 8x squared. Okay, identify the coefficients. What would the coefficients be here? Okay, so coefficients, they're the big numbers next to the variables. So is seven a coefficient? Well, we're gonna say no. Okay, so it's not necessarily wrong to consider this a coefficient, but it is more correct to call it a constant. Okay, so this is a constant. We're not gonna call this a coefficient because it's just a number by itself. 9 is a coefficient, right? Because it's the big number next to the variable. So 9 is a coefficient. Here we have a variable by itself. So what coefficient is secretly attached to it? 1, right? Because 1 times y simply gives us y back, which is what we have right there. So there's always that secret hidden coefficient attached to these variables that are by themselves. Okay, and lastly, 8x squared, what is the coefficient? Well, it would just be 8. It would not be this exponent, right? Exponents are completely different. All we're looking for are for these big numbers that are next to the variables. Okay, and just one quick example to make sure we understand this. 27xy plus x to the fifth power. Okay, so what are our coefficients? Well, it'd be this big number that's next to the variables, right? 27. That's a coefficient here. And what about x to the fifth? What's our coefficient? Well, again, it's one, right? Because there is no coefficient here next to this variable. So this is always actually a one, okay? This, it doesn't matter if this is x. It doesn't matter if it's x to the fifth power, x to the thousandth power. It doesn't matter. If there is no coefficient next to it, it is always one. 
Okay, and lastly, we're gonna cover like terms. So what are like terms? Boom. Okay, so like terms are terms that have something that is the same between them, some sort of similarity. And what do I mean by similarity? Okay, well, there's gonna be two things. They're either gonna be just numbers, so they're just numbers, or they're gonna have the same variable and the same amount of that variable. Okay, I know that sounds really vague, but I'm gonna break it down right now for you. Okay, so if I wrote down these two numbers, 3x and 5x, are these like terms? Yes, they are. Why? Because they have the same variable and they also have the same amount of variable, okay? The coefficients can be different, okay? So don't get hung up on the coefficients because you're saying this is a three and this is a five, so they don't, no. They're, the coefficients can be different. The most important part is that they have the same variable, right? The x and the same amount of the variable. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so let's break this down. What's 3x? That's the same thing as 3 times x, right? And then 5x, that's the same thing as 5 times x. As you can see, they both only have one x, right? There's a single x here, there's a single x here. So that makes them like terms. Okay, so what if I change this up a little bit? What if I wrote down 3x and 5x squared? Okay, well, let's break these down again. So 3x, that's the same thing as 3 times x. And then 5x squared, that's the same thing as 5 times x times x. Because remember, this exponent right here just applies to this x right here, right? So that's why I have two of them. So these would not be like terms. Why? Well, they both have an x. Yes, that's true. But they have different amounts of x's. So here we have one X and over here we have two X's. So these are not like terms. Okay, so the easiest way to identify them is basically seeing that they have the same variable, okay, the same variable and the same exponent. So these X's, they technically just have a one, just have a one, right? That's why we only write it down one time. So again, this X technically has a one, but this X, has a two, which is why we wrote it down twice. So right off the bat, I can tell that these two, right, this three X and this five X squared are not like terms because their exponents do not match. All right, guys, so there's your intro into terms, coefficients, and like terms. In the next video, I'm gonna do a bunch of examples showing you how to identify like terms because there's a lot more to that that we can cover. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up. And if you still got questions, leave them in the comment section below. But I think I'm going to answer a lot of them in the next video. So definitely go check that out. And I'll see you there.